Hi, this is Jason. I'm doing a review of the Alienware AW3423DWF QD OLED gaming monitor. Uh, a little bit about this monitor is that it's probably the highest rated, most popular monitor um, that's out there for definitely gaming. Um, I'm not so sure about work, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in just a bit. But really wanted to check it out firsthand, see what uh, all the, uh, the hoopla is about uh, this monitor, see if it's a good fit for myself. So I'll share a couple things, uh, the initial impressions, things that I think are awesome uh, about this monitor, a couple things that are deal breakers, at least for me, um, talk a little about who, who this monitor is for, and just give some recommendations at the end. So let me get started. Um, the QD OLED, uh, monitor is really a, a blending of the best of both worlds with quantum dot technology and OLEDs where you have uh, each pixel is emissive so uh, you get those perfect blacks and huge contrast and really bright screens. Um, there's a lot of videos out there that go into technical depth. I'm not gonna you know decompose what a what an OLED monitor is or even quantum dot technology but just know that it really these monitors really provide the best in the best in the industry best in business as uh, what display tech can look like as of this day yes there's micro LED and mini LED but I think for all practical purposes this is really the best that money can buy um, relatively speaking and what's actually really attractive about this monitor is it's relatively affordable. The, the DFW uh, version of this Alienware model goes for about $1,000 or $999 on, on the Dell website. There's usually discounts. I've even seen um, refurbished models come out on the market for uh, 750 And if you're lucky, you can do coupon codes and other discounts stacked on top of it. And that can make this actually a pretty uh, reasonably priced monitor. So, um, I wanted to go check this out, find out, is this going to be a good fit for me uh, and what I'd like to use it for, which is both uh, PC gaming and also for work. And so let me dive in just a second, go through uh, what I've found. So I got to say, for my initial impressions, this monitor is bright. This brightness, uh, they talk about how this can hit 1,000 nits of brightness, which is extremely bright. I think most monitors are in the three to 400-ish uh, nits of brightness. So this is like more than three times the brightness. And yes, it is bright. It is crystal clear and it is bright. I turn, uh, the, that was the first thing I did when I had this monitor is I turn that brightness down to about 42% which I thought is what I could use on a extended period of time without getting eye strain and just kind of having so much, um, so much bright goodness that this monitor provides. So um, I think one of the next things I noticed is the monitor height is still a bit short. I don't know. This is monitor height is for, ev it's different for everybody for, at least for me, I usually stick a, I don't know, four to five inch box underneath um, the monitor so that, as you can see here, that you can have kind of a dual screen. You have a laptop screen below and then um, kind of your main your main primary screen above. And this is great. I use this all the time for, for work and, and for gaming as well. If I'm not mistaken, this thing just went to standby or pixel refresh, which is great. Um, so I think it's still a little bit short. And I think actually, to be fair, probably all monitors don't really go that, that much higher anyways. So that could just be a personal preference thing. I did update this uh, monitor to the latest firmware. It's the M3B104 firmware uh, that was released on June 3rd, June 5th of 2023. And uh, so it's got the latest software that um, Alienware and Dell's provided uh, for this monitor to fix any nits that they found. And what's really attractive about this DFW monitor versus the DW model Alienware is that you can actually update firmware. So as they improve software and performance, you reap those benefits of these firmware updates. So I think that's fantastic. Um, 
I want to get a couple things out of the way. Uh, there's some people who have complained on the DW model that there's fan noise. I didn't notice any fan noise on this monitor. I still don't hear any fan noise after gaming on it for uh, extended periods of time. So that's not an issue. And there's been um, some other popular criticisms like um, uh, there's been like criticisms about the font layout and it had to do with the uh, arrangements of the RGB pixels on each of the, um, for this OLED monitor, it's in like in a triangular shape. And some people say that it's lead, leads to like text blurriness. And I personally don't notice it. And I've, you know, done some work on my, um, Alienware and the clarity seems fine. Uh, I have no issue. And to be fair, also this whole like text clarity thing, it really has to do with your viewing angle. For me, I sit, I don't know, good two and a half, three feet away from the monitor. If I sit too close, it's too much to, it's too much to look at. Um, and so, yeah, if anything, um, you know, pixels can look really bad up close if you're like super up close, but when you step far back away, things can look amazing. So I have no issues with the, uh, the pixel arrangement and layout, not an issue. Let's start with awesomeness. This uh, laptop, this uh, this monitor is amazing in terms of clarity. Gaming on this is, is definitely next level in the sense that uh, it looks like you're looking through a window, like a window into your PC games, which is crazy because uh, I think, you know, if you think about monitors, there's supposed there's like Microsoft Windows. It's kind of you think about computers, and they're supposed to be um, a window into cyberspace or into the uh, into the uh, I don't know the unknown. Um, with most monitors, you're like, okay, it's a monitor, great. With a QD OLED, this this clarity is just second to none. Um, everything looks better on it. Watching YouTube videos. Um, playing games is incredible. I, uh, I play some of these games like Rise of the Tomb Raider or Cyberpunk 2077 or maybe even Metro Exodus. And I think gaming on this QD OLED has highlighted certain details in the game that I had not noticed before. And I think it's only, it's enabled by the clarity of this, um, this monitor that I can really see that level of detail i would see like dust getting kicked up around people's feet that i never noticed before as you have a character forging through a world um it feels very immersive i'm gonna go out there a little bit and say quasi virtual reality in the sense that it's just so darn clear um and who knows maybe that's a better thing than you know these apple uh new vision headsets that you know wrap around or all these vr headsets i think um there's always this attempt to try to get you immersive into the game and i think those are great um but if you don't like wearing a headset i think getting a nice 34 inch esque curved uh gaming monitor i think it's probably like the second gaming monitor is probably the second best thing to wearing a headset and getting plugged in you can just see so much detail um, width wise and it feels very immersive playing a game so it's it's fantastic that is incredible let's talk about deal breakers i would say one of the first things i noticed about this monitor is it doesn't have USB-C. that is a huge huge deal breaker for me on so many levels you know USB-C can do several things. One, it can provide power to your uh, laptop, especially like a gaming laptop or a work laptop. Um, it does data and does video uh, transmission. And you know, for USB-C, it's, it's almost like the throughputs uh, can either meet or exceed the, uh, the throughput of HDMI data, uh, allowing you to have, you know, higher refresh rates or, or, or uh, uh, higher resolutions being uh, passed through the, the USB-C. And, and so that's a huge deal breaker for me. Um, my, my previous monitor has a USB-C uh, port and it's so clean because 
I'm going to go out here and say this. Monitors, I think, are supposed to act as multiple things. It is supposed to be really something that helps clean up your desk and simplify your entire setup. USB-C would clean up so many things on my desktop, just on my desk, in terms of wires. Without it, I've got a rat's nest of wires. USB, uh, I have to get a power cable, power brick. Um, any USB peripheral um, devices, wireless headsets, mice, um, external um, webcams, all that stuff has to, uh, instead of going into the computer, has to budget all those ports in my laptop, either my work laptop or my gaming laptop. And that's a pain to plug all these things in. And then your desk just looks like a mess. It's, it's covered in wires and it's, it's just not clean. So unfortunately, that is a deal breaker for me. The second part is speakers. This laptop has no speakers embedded into it, which some might argue is, oh, okay, well, you know, you can use your laptop speakers. And usually laptop speakers, they're not that great. They don't have that much, um, the sound quality is not that great. It might not have much bass. I'm fortunate my laptop is an Asus, Asus uh, Zephyrus G15 um, back from the 2022 model. And uh, it's got decent audio, but I will say it's, it's really frustrating because if I have a work laptop and I'm on a virtual meeting, I can't pump out any audio through the monitor and I have to do it through the laptop. And so as a result, it's just, it's just not very elegant. I don't really like how uh, that's, um, they don't have any speakers available. You know, sometimes when I game, I use a headset plugged into the head headphone jack in my laptop, and that's that's okay, and you know, it's it's really practical. But I just feel, or if I'm gonna put this money out to buy this monitor, it's got to have USB-C and speakers, and so this currently just doesn't have that. That might not be a bad thing for you, but it is for me. Um, Pixel refresh. So the biggest Achilles heel of OLED technology is screen burning. And there's lots of videos online that I can learn about OLED and burning. And I think the, the challenge I have with this monitor, especially if I'm trying to use it as my uh, go-to monitor for both gaming and work, is that there is this risk of uh, burning with leaving content static up on the screen. If you leave it on too long, um, it can lead to ghosting or image retention in the background. And that cause a lot of problems. It's like permanent, it's like permanently built in that it'd be permanently burnt into the screen. Dell and Alienware have implemented a lot of mitigating features to this, which is this OLED, um, OLED pixel refresh, where it'll like turn off your, your screen and run some cycle in the background to help clear out any image retention issues um, in the back to extend the longevity of your laptop and protect it from uh, image burn-in. The challenge is that pixel refresh um, pop-up window will just pop up at the worst times. I was, just the other day I was on a, on a virtual call and all of a sudden, boop, you know, would you like to do the pixel refresh? Which, you know, you have the option to ignore it or postpone it and things like that, which is great. But just for me, that was a little like, oh, maybe I should do it. And then the monitor will be off for like eight minutes, which in the working world, that's not a good thing. You might get an IM, you might get called into a meeting and you'll have to be like, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Let me wait for my however many minute um, time window for this pixel refresh to go through its cycle. And so that's really hard for me to, to recommend this for, for work purposes. Um, again, yes, there's workarounds. You don't have to necessarily uh, do your pixel refresh there and then. They do give you that option, but it, it was it, it caught me off. It caught me off guard a little bit. So um, I think the other piece is this monitor stand is huge. Um, and you might be wondering, what do you mean by it's huge? The legs pop out and take up a large amount of surface area on my desk and it it sticks out quite a bit where 
it's I don't know what can be done to keep you know this monitor stable center of gravity wise but it just eats up a lot of space more than I, I feel comfortable with um, it's a very subjective topic but it's just something out there that 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 made it to the to the deal breaker list who is this monitor for I would definitely say this is for gamers uh, gaming enthusiasts um, this is recommended for gaming um, it's I love it. Games feel brand new, super detailed. You feel like you're in the game. You have a greater appreciation for the game developers. You did all the art content. Um, amazing. Love it. Um, it's got those DisplayPort 1.4 um, ports, which, you know, that's probably a pretty specialized port. A lot of my gaming laptop doesn't have it. My work laptop doesn't have it. it has two of those ports and it's like again back to USB-C just go back to USB-C it'll fix more than more than 80% of the problems right there um yeah again as I've talked about it's not for work at least not for me uh with regards to the port selection no speakers and um uh yeah the, the whole pixel refresh feature just that wasn't quite ready for me yet at this time. I don't think this is going to be my uh, monitor going forward, but I think in the future, if if Alienware, Dell can, can fix these, um, yeah, the port issue, the speakers, maybe a more quicker, efficient way to do the pixel refresh, uh, this becomes a very, very, very attractive monitor uh, for me. So. If you found this review to be helpful, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe. Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you think I'm just being difficult? Uh, it's okay. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining. Until next time.